Welcome to the Our Vision Caribbean and Latino Filmmaker Podcast, hosted by Charles Aline and Dr. Christopher C. Odom. On this episode, we speak with actor, filmmaker, educator, and biker Juan Gabriel Rambo Reynoso about making the best of what life gives you as an artist each and every day. This episode is sponsored by the Our Vision Caribbean and Latino Film Festival, which is dedicated to ensuring that Caribbean and Latino filmmakers have a voice that's heard and a wide audience to showcase their work. The Our Vision Caribbean and Latino Film Festival is the only combined Caribbean and Latino film festival that is Oscar qualifying for short films. Each year, Our Vision will screen the winners of the short film categories live in theaters on both coasts for one week as part of the requirements for Oscar consideration. Click the link in our profile now to submit your film to the next Our Vision Caribbean and Latino Film Festival to share your work, reach your audience, and turn your dreams into reality. Okay, welcome to our second uh, podcast. We're talking today with uh, Juan Reynoso. And uh, I want to say that the first podcast was really successful and I want to get you guys to continue to um, subscribe, follow us. This this uh, podcast is only going to get better as we go along. Okay, Juan, welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, man, it's, a, it's an honor, guys. I, I'm teaching summer school, so I have to, <laughs> I have to rush over here and um, I got yeah. You know, I, I teach TV and film productions over at Compton High School. Well, I added the film. It's television and video productions now, <laughs> and um, yeah, I got kids working at, at different places, and they come and check in with me. I had one kid; he needed advice about everything, so I, was, I had to rush over here. But I'm glad. I'm glad I'm here. I mean, whatever I could do to help, whatever you know, you know how we do it. All right, let's start there. How is it? like being a um a film teacher in compton it's i mean i graduated from compton high school in, in 1988 uh i've been doing this 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 camera stuff since i was 12 years old in the seventh grade back then you remember we called it junior high school and um i i, I tell the i tell every time i try to sell this program to anyone it, it um and they put a camera in my hand, it changed my life forever. You know, I, I just, this is it. You know, even though I was acting, you know, school plays and everything, I love doing that. That my thing was camera and, and trying to, trying to learn everything there is about the camera. No one taught me. I had to, I was manually zooming on the lens. <laughs> I didn't know there was a button, <laughs> but it was funny because I was in the choir and, and it was a Christmas show. And my first gig, if you want to call it that, uh, I, I we sang at the beginning of the play and then I ran where I had the camera set up and I, I recorded the rest of the play. I think I had it zoomed out all the way to get our, 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 our chorus uh, part. But the, the thing was that the, at that time, only ninth graders could be on on in the video crew. Because you know you had to, but I asked the the librarian, Miss Howard. I said, I want to, I want to do this. She goes, oh, sweetie, you're just a seventh grader. But she, I guess she saw my enthusiasm, and she said, Tell you what, I'll make a deal with you. And it sounds like a movie, but you know, I'll make a deal with you. Come in every morning and and do the the newspaper. Back then, you had the sword, so you put all the news, you know, in the library and clean up. And 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 um, I, when there's when there's a, an event, I'll let you be a part of the crew. And um. Uh, what time I have to be there? She goes, be there at six thirty. So I was there at six, you know, and and she saw that, and and all the the ninth graders saw that. And he just let me be on on camera, and, and and that that one time with the Christmas show, no ninth graders were there, so I was the only camera guy there, and I just ran with it. I mean, you know, learning on my own, I I didn't care. I just ran with it. Eventually, there was a, a UCLA extension program um on Saturdays and they put me in it and I didn't know I was in there with college students and you know <laughs> I I'm I'm a I'm a I'm a 12 year old kid 
you know, sitting in there and, and I was just loving it. I had to go far. Um, I mean, we lived in Compton. I had to go all the way to Crenshaw and Sepulveda. It's uh, Southern California Regional Occupational Center, SCROC. You know, it was that's how far the UCLA program went. And I went, I was there on the bus every morning, you know. And I, at that time, what they added was uh, acting and all that. My thing was camera. So I was with the, with the film class. And uh, part of that class, uh, believe it or not, is uh, Anthony Anderson was, was there. He was, he's from Compton. He went to Whaley Junior High School. So I have the film we made on VHS. So if we ever want to blackmail Anthony Anderson, we could, <laughs> we could show everyone his, his, his ninth grade, <laughs> his ninth grade uh, uh, little movie we made. You know, and it's funny because I ended up acting in the movie, even though I was, I was a camera crew. And that was a lot of fun. I mean, I, I got to tell the kids, it just changed my life forever. And coming back, uh, you know, going into the industry, I uh, was working for the fire fire department right after high school as a cameraman. People don't know, you know, how big the industry is where you it's not just Hollywood. And I remember I, I, I was in the video unit with, with the fire department, L.A. County Fire Department, hanging out of helicopters and you know, just any chance I got, all the older guys were too scared to do it. And this is before the cam, the helicopters had the camera on. I was holding on and camera on my shoulder. You know, I was lucky. I was, I was, I feel like the Mexican Forrest Gump. I was at the right places at the right time. At that time, when I started the, uh, mem I remember, I don't know if you guys remember, uh, Universal Studios caught fire, the whole back lot caught fire. And, and I was at the fire department at the time. And, I was I was up there in the helicopter, you know, at night recording the the, the back lot on fire. And was that, that was when the tram crashed? No, the, no, this was huh. something uh some janitors. I don't remember what it really came down to, but I remember Sylvester Stallone was doing Oscar at the time. That film went on. Yeah. Uh, it was set in the twenties, and all these antique classic cars were were charcoaled up. I mean, we were there mm -hmm. all week. We were there all week recording the aftermath and all that. Uh, I have all of that on footage. And I mean, I just ran with it. And what I remember is, is that everywhere I went, there, there weren't that many uh, Latino or Hispanic people. I was always the only one around, you know, and, and, and of course, sometimes the only person of color there. And I don't know, it, it just, it just, it just stuck with me. It's like, I, you know, it, it didn't feel right. Not that I was, you know, paranoid or anything. It's just like, I, I felt alone. I always felt alone and, and, and no one mistreated me or anything. Everyone always encouraged me. I was a young guy there. Yeah, I remember meeting people from KTLA and CNN and, you know, and they were always encouraging me and giving me their cards and, you know, and so, as I went on into the industry further, further, and, and then I started acting, um, I'm the kind of person that just does what I want to do. You know, um, it's not about the money all the time. Yeah, we like to make some good money, but I have the passion for it. And I remember uh, I wanted to teach drama. I thought I wanted to teach drama. And I went back to, to Compton High to be a teacher. And as I'm sitting there, you know, of course, the budget's not there. There's no money for the theater department. There's no this and that. There's no lights in the auditorium and on stage. So took my video camera and, and we recorded this, the kids do acting out their scenes outside with the sunlight, you know. And of course, to project them, you don't need any light. You just need a projector in a dark room. So I, I switched it. I switched the acting class to acting for the camera. And then from there, I was like, you know what? Kids wanted to learn about the camera and I, I just decided you know what I want to I want to start this program and I remember um going to the CTE ROP well back then it was ROP vocat and telling them I want to teach this class and oh no we're not gonna we're not gonna do that no no it's too expensive and no who's gonna learn I said look and I gave them again I I sold it to him say hey I pitched it to him say hey, it, it changed my life I want to I want to do the same for kids and and I remember they're saying no. And, you know, you're not going to stop me from doing what I think is, is a good idea. And I told him, look, you don't have to pay me. I'm going to do this on my own. I'm going to bring my own equipment. 
And when we're, you know, I remember the first week I had 75 kids show up after school. Wow. And, and then by the end of the month, it was 150. And that's where this guy comes in, Charles Aline. <laughs> you know, we, we, we connected with, 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 a, with a crazy place. <laughs> and I don't know if we should talk about that, show. We're not going to mention that. We're going to leave that one alone. We just gotta- <laughs> yeah, we're going to leave that one alone. But that's that, you know, uh, things, things just happen by, by fate. And, and I, I, you know, they, things happen for a reason. So uh, that's when uh, Charles Aline comes in and, and we, we just run with all these kids. And, and by the end of the, uh, of the whole first year we had written, they had written a, a short film and, and they shot it, they edited it. And, you know, with, with Mr. Aline's connections, we had a screening at the Santa Barbara film festival that year. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> you know, and uh, we were, we were, we were just loving it. Cause I, I love watching kids. Everybody talks about the light bulb going off. You know, and and they say you're lucky if one kid, if you get one kid. But we got we were lucky that year. We got a lot of kids. We got one special one that we knew he was going to be the the kid that be the the film the filmmaker. You know, and and he was good. Ho, little Jose, ninth grader, he was real good. And I remember people started calling. From what I heard, people started calling the school about the film program at Compton High and administering. <laughs> What film? We don't have a film. No, you do. You do have a film program, Mr. Reynoso. And then all the teachers were there. And and then, you know, it got weird to them. And I remember uh, 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 they called me and said, we like to offer it as a regular class during the school year. And I'm going to tell you I, the way I responded because I, I don't want to remind everybody. But I was like, okay, make it happen. And, and they did not at first, they wanted to buy Circuit City cameras, you know, the little camcorders. Yeah. And I'm like, no. And, but they, at the same time, they want to they wanna, uh, bug you about teaching industry standards. You got to teach to the standards, the industry. And, I, you know, I'm, I'm a real, I, I always call it like I see it and the way it's supposed to be. I told them, I said, hey, you want me to teach industry standards? You better buy industry equipment. These kids cannot go to a studio saying, oh, I know how to operate the Panasonic home video camera, you know, camcorder. And and eventually they did. They did because they saw, I go, you got to buy the, the stuff I had. I had the two JVC 110s, GY, GY 110s, the Pro HD cameras. Yeah. That, and Charles introduced me to that time. We went to the, <laughs> the guy did the seminar on, on it. Go, oh, those are the cameras for the kids because they they had a good wear and tear uh, durability. And, you know, we went, we ran with it. And that's was, when was that, Charles? I mean. Oh, man, we, we, we the, go down the lane here. It's, the it's the program's cool. about 18, 19 years old now. Yeah, know? I actually had a JVC GY HD 100U. <laughs> oh. Shot in 24P. <laughs> this episode is sponsored by the R Vision Caribbean and Latino Film Festival, which is dedicated to ensuring that Caribbean and Latino filmmakers have a voice that's heard and a wide audience to showcase their work. The R Vision Caribbean and Latino Film Festival is the only combined Caribbean and Latino film festival that is Oscar qualifying for short films. Each year, R Vision will screen the winners of the short film categories live in theaters on both coast for one week as part of the requirements for Oscar consideration. Click the link in our profile now to submit your film to the next R Vision Caribbean and Latino Film Festival to share your work, reach your audience, and turn your dreams into reality. Yeah. So, so what we did, and I, I went to uh, Bel Air Camera over. You know, they don't exist anymore. But I had already bought two, two cameras, two of those, and I told the guy get whatever I bought, give me three of each. You know, and what they did was they upgraded for for the school. They upgraded uh, the two tens, the two hundreds for for the price. I think it's a hundred dollars less than the one tens. Okay, good, go for it. Whatever's better for the kids. And we started rolling with those three cameras. And, and, and whenever it was needed, I would bring my 110s. And I mean, I, I wasn't really using them that much. And uh, man, I, I think, you know, people 
pray and, and wish that when they go into teaching, they could they could make a difference. And I think we've been lucky that we we've been making a difference in a lot of kids. And, yeah. and, and, and you know, it's just like, wow, you know, they're still around. Charles sees them all the time when they I don't have children of my own, but those kids are my kids. You know, they call me dad and pops and they're, I have grandkids. <laughs> I have grandkids now, you know, Papa Rambo. By the way, my nickname is Rambo, and I'm known in the in the hood as Rambo. But um that 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 part of teaching is priceless. I mean, it you know, the acting stuff is great. You know, I've I've, I've been in some again, lucky enough to be in some 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 in front of some good directors and 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 but the teaching part, I I I don't yeah, I had a nightmare once that I was leaving teaching and I woke up crying. Oh, and no. I, I'm not exaggerating. I'm not exaggerating. I even went and told the principal. He's like, well, I don't know, but I'm getting old <laughs> and I do miss Hollywood. I miss it. Let, let me I, ask you, you know, a question. Can I, can I ask you a question? Go ahead. Um, tell me how, you know, we, we talked about teaching. Um, let, let's talk about your acting career. What was your first what was your first big part that changed your trajectory in terms of acting? And could you tell us a little bit about that? Oh, I mean, I, I know uh, act, the acting part was an accident. I always, I, 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 that's the way I see it. I, I mean, I would be at the fire department and go, go rehearse for a play in the evening over at Compton college. And then there was an agent in the audience saying, I want to represent you. And, to me, I, I I laughed at it because like really, you know, I, I never thought of that. I never thought of myself that way. And I um one thing you'll know is when I decide to, okay, I, I go all in with it. So, you know, I did the headshots and you know, walking around Hollywood and and you know, it wasn't panning out. I would I would do um uh, he sent me for he goes to make sure you really want to do this, I want you to get your feet wet. So he sent me to this casting guy that does extra background. And I went and this guy, you know, basically the orientation was if I send you somewhere and you don't show up, don't ever talk to me again. You know, I'm, I'm a man, you know, I'm okay. I'm, I'm going to be there. You know, I'm going to be there. The first, the first thing was in Calamigos ranch up there in, uh, in, in, in the Santa Monica mountains. And, yeah. Yeah. I know. I know where that is. And, and I don't know if you're from LA, <laughs> Yeah, and yeah, remember, yeah. I was, yeah, I know. <laughs> before, before, before the blue line and all. I mean, the blue line was in existence, but before GPS and all that, way back, uh, I would call one eight hundred commute, and they the RTD will tell you how to get from one stop to the other, how to get to. So, turns out I wasn't going to be able to get to the set on time on Monday morning. So I actually, it, it, you know where it is now. I spent the night out on the side of the road wow. uh, that, that night before. I remember Bertha, my sister, his, his, his wife dropped me off. They dropped me off and she was worried. Are you sure Rambo? You know, well, I'm fine. I'm, I just, I slept, I slept on the, I didn't sleep that much. Cause I was like, what did I get myself into? But my whole thing is, well, I'm here. I, 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 I've made that decision. I've made that leap and, and I got to go through it as far as see how far it'll take me. Now that was, and I, you, you, cause you asked about what, 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 what catapulted or what made a difference. All of those things made a difference. And this, it ties into a good story because I get there and, you know, morning I go brush my teeth and I, let's do this. You know, it's a, it was Wayne's world too. <laughs> <laughs> Wayne's World too, and you know you got to bring in your own wardrobe. And I was a hippie. I was, uh, you know, I had tie dye shirts and bell bottoms and all of that. And you know, I got through that. And then right after that, the, the guy go, okay, good. Now I, I want you to go to Naked Gun thirty three and a third. So there I am working with OJ Simpson, yeah, Ooh. for a while. <laughs> but then you know. It, it, it wasn't working out. I, I ended up in Japan for a year because I needed money. I got a, a job in construction. I don't don't ask me. I don't know how to swing a hammer, but I learned and I did it, you know. And when I came back, I told the agent, my agent, hey, uh, if it's not if it's not something that I have to audition for, don't don't send me. I, I got you know, I, I need to I, I don't know if I was putting my foot down, but I thought I had to let them know. 
And he sent me, finally sent me to an audition. And it was the movie Kazam. And that was wow. the first, that was the, with, with uh, Shaquille O'Neal. It was directed by Paul Michael Glazer, uh, the original Starsky from Starsky and Hutch. And that was my first audition ever, you know, and, and I got the part. I didn't even know what you, when the agent called me, you booked on Kazam. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> She goes, you got the part, silly. I go, oh, okay, you know. And and there, I then I started learning about the industry. I started learning, you know, the terminology and and hey, they like you, you know. Uh, I was I thought I was going to be there for three days. I ended up working for four months. They they actually wrote more scenes for my character, and I didn't know what that meant. And then you know, my 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 manager like they like you, they they like you, you know, and that was cool. Um. Again, that 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 led and that was the only audition I ever had up until recently, you know, going back into Hollywood. But Volcano, uh, I worked uh, doing stunts with uh, Steven Spielberg for Amistad. You know, I'm not credited, oh, but OK, hey, I'll sweep the I'll sweep the office floors if it's for Spielberg. You know, I told I'll go. I'll do it. I don't care. You know, and I, I was I was working on Amistad, which was a beautiful experience. You know, you're 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 four feet away from from Steven Spielberg. You know, I, I just had to pick his brain. I was just picking his brain every chance I got. And he was very, I, I, I really appreciate how receptive he was. You know, he didn't he does. I, he's never looked I, from what I saw. He didn't look down on me because I was just a stunt man or, you know, and, and we we had conversations. I remember. He asked, so do you act? I go, oh, yeah, I act, you know. And he goes, uh, I, I said, I also write. He goes, oh. And again, here's me learning the terminology. He goes, <laughs> pitch me pitch me one of your scripts. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't know what that means. He goes, tell me about it. This episode is sponsored by the R Vision Caribbean and Latino Film Festival, which is dedicated to ensuring that Caribbean and Latino filmmakers have a voice that's heard and a wide audience to showcase their work. The R Vision Caribbean and Latino Film Festival is the only combined Caribbean and Latino film festival that is Oscar qualifying for short films. Each year, R Vision will screen the winners of the short film categories live in theaters on both coasts for one week as part of the requirements for Oscar consideration. Click the link in our profile now to submit your film to the next R Vision Caribbean and Latino Film Festival to share your work, reach your audience, and turn your dreams into reality.